to fasten your seatbelt, insert the metal fitting. The flight attendant's demonstration was eerily authentic, right down to the rapid fire monotone, the gestures, the blank look. You could easily imagine reaching for your seatbelt. But this wasn't an airliner. It was a tiny storefront theater on New York's Lower East Side. For 70 minutes, actors recreated six real-life aircraft accidents using the actual words of flight crews trying to deal with impending disaster. The play was called Charlie Victor Romeo. Phonetic spelling for CVR, the cockpit voice recorder that often provides some of the most important evidence in a plane crash. Last 40. Except for some dramatic sound effects, Charlie Victor Romeo offered nothing but the near verbatim words from the transcripts of cockpit voice recordings. No explosions, no theatrical props flying around, no fake blood. Critics praise the stark portrayal of what happened in these doomed cockpits. They admire the combination of realism and drama, as in this plane that flew too low and clipped the treetops. Or the wrenching change from humor to horror that occurred aboard an American Eagle flight bound for Chicago in 1994. Is that like stereo radio? You guys don't have a hard job at all. We're back there slugging it out with all these people. One moment, the cockpit crew, played by Michael Bruno and Oliver Wyman, joked around with a flight attendant, played by Audrey Crabtree. In response to her request, they demonstrated some of the automated emergency warnings. Well, you know, it's like I was saying before. If there's a rain cloud up ahead, they'll tell you. But how do you know it's rain? Because it says, it says, to rain, to rain. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it says, to rain. To rain. As they joked, freezing rain was building up a fatal layer of ice on the wings. Are we out of hold yet? Oh, uh, no, just going down 8,000. All right. A few moments later, the crew lost control. I knew we were going to do that. All right, I'm, I'm trying to keep it at 180. All right, we got it. All right, no it up. No it up! Oh, God. There were no survivors. When the show opened, theater critics called it riveting, but it also attracted an unexpected audience, aviation professionals, pilots, and controllers. Gary Gladstone is a longtime private pilot. And I thought, oh, no way in hell are they going to be able to, a bunch of actors sit down and do what I've heard on tapes before as a pilot, or get the sense of it. But uh, I read some reviews. I came down with a couple of friends one night and uh, sat here, and my heart started beating at a faster rate when the lights went on. And uh, it was a killer evening, watching uh, pilots and uh, aviators in film uh, because uh, although some are very good, uh, most of them miss the, uh, the the subtleties that other pilots sort of recognize. This this cast is absolutely drop dead amazing. They had the scan going across the, uh, the instrument panel the way the way you would in an emergency. The show's three directors are part of a five year old collaborative theater group called Collective Unconscious. Neither they nor the cast has flying experience. It was the psychology of the human interaction under pressure that first appealed to them. But in preparing the show, they quickly realized the material had to be handled carefully. In order to attempt something like this, it's got to be done correctly in a way that isn't going to leave you um, ashamed after having been accused of sensationalizing or trivializing people's deaths for the sake of entertainment. This is all internal. This is people's brains. What's happening to humans? There's no explosions. There's, you're focused on these guys inside of a cockpit of an airplane thinking about what they're going through and understanding what they're going through. Did you have any sense there's a fine line that you can't cross? Well, yes, but uh, being in theater for a long time, I myself kind of see it like Shakespeare, too. A lot of people die in Shakespeare. A lot of people die in Shakespeare. A lot of people die in tragedies of plays for thousands of years and stories. So, yeah, we tried to approach it very, very seriously, understanding the gravity of the subject matter we were dealing with, but at the same time gave it its theatrical weight. 80 knots. 
co-pilot's airplane, your aircraft. Charlie Victor Romeo is not a pure documentary. The directors and cast had to imagine and create tones of voice, facial expressions, rapid-fire pacing of dialogue, and shifts of mood. Things that make the difference between words in a transcript and a theatrical performance. Co-director Patrick Daniels thinks the performances help the audience see through the technical jargon to the underlying story. They may not get the, de the details, the definitions of terms, the, you know, what does, uh, you know, mock, uh, mock speed trim mean or whatever, but they get a kind of a visceral sense that this has a connection to the airplane and these people are trying to control it in a certain way. They, they understand it on a kind of a, a subconscious level. The show opened in October. As word spread, its run was extended four times. Cast members found that aviation professionals often stayed after the show to chat and offer technical tips. Army Lieutenant Colonel Lawrence Shattuck teaches a course in human error at the U.S. Military Academy at West Point. He was so impressed that he took his class to see the show. When you're trying to teach cadets how to ac analyze an accident, you try to get them to put themselves into the situation as it's unfolding. And so you look at an accident and you say, well, they should have done this or they should have done that. The reality is that when they were in that situation, they didn't know about that or they didn't have access to that information. So the cadets were able to uh, see the pilots in that situation and get a sense of what they knew and what they didn't know and to see them respond uh, to the things that were available to them at the time. For some cadets, like Latanya Kolodoye, the biggest surprise was how fast things happened. So when you're reading through a transcript, it takes you about two hours to three hours to read through completely, and then you sit through um, a performance of that accident that takes maybe five minutes to show you everything that happened, and really the most critical elements of the accident happen within about 30 seconds. You really get a feel for how serious um, aircraft accidents can be and how complex flights are. So when the enemy was coming down... The complexity of human error is Colonel Shattuck's professional field. He studies engineering psychology, the science of how humans interact with machines. 1515, transponder. Flaps 15, take off brief and complete time check. Much of what Colonel Shattuck saw in the theater mirrored his training in the subtle ways that flight crews can make mistakes, like this Aero Peru flight in 1996. V2 plus 10. The altimeters are stuck. Hey, the altimeters have stuck. Yeah. All of them? Now this is really new. Uh, Maintenance workers had taped over the instrument sensors of the plane before they washed it and neglected to remove the tape. V2 plus 10. What, ha what happened? We're not climbing. I am climbing, but the speed. Hold it. No. Keep the speed. When the jetliner took off from Lima, the instruments gave false speed and altitude readings, completely disorienting the crew. Okay, we declare an emergency. We have no basic instruments, no altimeter, no airspeed indicator. We declare an emergency. Roger, altitude. The captain, played by Dan Crum, and the first officer, played by Julia Berger, began arguing over how to get the instruments back. Keep trying. There's no auto throttle. Oh, the speed. The later investigation showed that was the wrong thing to do because the plane was flying perfectly, only the instruments were wrong. Because that argument was going back and forth, they actually missed uh, the ability to diagnose the plane properly. They spent so much time arguing about whether to engage the autopilot or not that they missed the diagnosis. But if they just disengaged the, pilot, the autopilot, they could have flown the plane themselves just using their, their uh, visual senses. We have speed, we have speed problems, instrument source selector, flight director. It can't be. Hey, look, the speed with the power we have, it, it can't be. It can't be. It's true. It's wrong. 330? Yes, but they're even, aren't they? Well, say yours on alternate air, Dad. It's the one down there, the lower button. The lower one. The lower one. The lower one. That one down there. And I'm sitting here in my seat screaming, look at the, look at the compass. I mean, that'll, that'll give you your heading right away. Don't look at the static instruments. And that's what they were doing. And they were arguing with one another, and they, they were just, they, they were stunned with disbelief. We're controlling the turns by power. The play ends with a recreation of the final moments of United Flight 232, the 1989 flight where crew skills and quick thinking saved hundreds of lives. On a flight from Denver, the DC-10 center engine exploded, destroying the hydraulic system and disabling the flight controls. Um, maybe we can only turn right, can't turn left. United 232. 
Captain Al Haynes, played by Stuart Rudin, fought to bring the wide body to a safe landing. Okay, United 232, understand you have normal power on one and three engines. That's affirmative. I wonder about the outboard ailerons. Do you think if we put some flaps out, it would give us outboard? God, I hate to do anything. Uh oh, we're going to have to do something. Haynes worked with his crew and a flight instructor who happened to be a passenger and came into the cockpit to help. Well, thanks for coming up, Captain. My name's Al Haynes. Hi, Al. Denny Finch. How do you do, Denny? I'll tell you what, Al. We'll have a beer when all this is done. Well, I don't drink. I sure as hell have one. Little right turns, little right turns. They made up new flying techniques as they went and never lost their composure or their sense of humor. And we didn't do this thing in my last simulator check. No. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Bird coffee all over. Oh, it's just coffee. Look at this thing on the ground. Don't worry about it. Incredibly, they did make it to the airport at Sioux City, Iowa. Flight 232 made it to the runway, then cartwheel just as it touched down. 111 people were killed, 185 survived, including the entire crew. Charlie Victor Romeo recently ended its run, but the performances were preserved on videotape shot by the Air Force, which plans to use it for training purposes. The directors, who began by simply wanting to put on a good show, say they're gratified to find they've created something more. To be told by the Air Force and the Army and pilots who have come and seen the show that they've learned something and that what we're doing is going to be of use to them, that's just the most rewarding thing I've ever had happen to me. It's just mind-blowingly rewarding. In August, Charlie Victor Romeo will return for a limited run in a larger New York theater, and there are plans for a national tour. And recently, the play won two New York Drama Desk Awards for Best Sound and for Unique Theatrical Experience.